So this is the car when I got when I was 16, when I was, uh, I was a hand-me-down Honda Civic from my uncle. And it was what I took on the half-hour commute to school every day, going back and forth from school, just sitting in traffic and getting into the uh, occasional accident. I mean, I was a pretty bad driver, to be honest. But uh, the world has changed a lot since then. I mean, fast forward a decade now, and my cousin, who's grown up in the same town and is now coming of age, uh, is one of the growing number of Americans without a license. And that's because he commutes to school via Uber. I mean, we grew up in a typical American suburb, so that means you know, no bus, no train, no taxi. Uh, this is what it is. And car ownership rates are declining. I mean, in 2006, we hit a tipping point um, after a century of nearly continuous growth. A about a quarter of Americans are actually not replacing the cars that they sell. So the shift from ownership to sharing is already happening. But what's going to happen next? I want to introduce you to this concept of the second bounce of the ball. It was a uh, it was popularized by Ron Cohen, who's the founder of one of the most successful private equity firms, Apex Partners. And the gist is this. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to bounce a ball, but only the more skilled sportsmen can predict uh, where the next bounce will happen. And it's the same way in the business world, right? I mean, we all know what's happening now, like Uber is huge, let's say. But the trick really is to spot the next opportunity. And so the, the world is changing, and, and startups are a part of it. Um, but I'm actually not here to tell you about Uber or uh, cars or anything like that, to be honest. I, I just want to think about the next bounce. I mean, change is already happening, right? I mean, there's plenty of people who are trying to, let's say, compete with Uber or uh, uh, digitize a taxi fleet, or some people are worried, uh, how do we deal with those uh, taxi drivers who lose their jobs? There are plenty of smart people who are building online platforms to help you sell your car or buy a car or online platforms to buy car insurance or uh, with some fancy uh, big data analysis. Uh, uh, that all sounds kind of cool. But what happens after that, right? And so even smarter people will try to invent future technologies. And um, these future technologies that have the potential to make, make op, like online car marketplaces and car repair shops completely obsolete. So they work on self-driving technology by building better sensors or uh, better software. But that's actually not what I'm here to talk about either. Because, because plenty of my fellow TEDx speakers, you can find them all on YouTube, will tell you about the self-driving car, right? Uh, they'll tell you how it works, and they'll tell you uh, uh, its time-saving benefits or energy-saving benefits or uh, safety benefits or who knows what. And in a nutshell, I agree. Uh, I do believe self-driving uh, will take over the world very quickly, starting with trains, trucks, cars, eventually, eventually delivery. And that's, that's cool. But what happens after the car? I mean, what's the next bounce after the car? And we have the potential to enable new technologies and new businesses in virtually every industry imaginable. Maybe it's in construction or in finance or in power or in, uh, in the restaurant business. I mean, every industry stands to be affected. So we are looking at a parking lot, right? A car parking lot where cars are not being used. 96% um, of a car's life is just spit sitting, being unused. And with self-driving technology, we can get rid of that. What do we do with all of these parking spaces and all the, side, all the space on the sides of the street that are being wasted? Maybe we can build a denser city, right? And build new homes. But maybe the city is actually going to grow bigger if there's self-driving cars because it will bring down the cost of transport, and I don't really need to, to live near a train station anymore uh, because I can take a pretty cheap door-to-door uh, -door self-driving chauffeur home, right? So maybe the city will spread out. I don't know, but it's going to change. And my future home will probably be powered by renewable energy, thanks to self-driving cars. I mean, why would self-driving cars enable 
solar energy. The biggest barrier to uh, renewable power right now is, uh, is the lack of storage capacity, right? Meaning we don't have enough batteries. And experts call the Tesla a battery on wheels. And it is expected to uh, be the primary uh, storage capacity for power on the grid. The sun doesn't shine when you want it to shine, you know? And the wind doesn't really blow when you want it to blow. I mean, it's not really shining right now. And so we have the potential to catalyze renewable power with uh, self-driving cars. I mean, that is cool and all. And I mean, we're unleashing a series of dominoes, right? Kind of in other industries. But we don't really know in which ways these dominoes will fall. I mean, you've already heard that self-driving cars might be safer. How much safer? Well, Waymo's car is about 50 times safer than, uh, than a human driver. OK. So the eighth leading cause of death in the world could be virtually eliminated. What happens to the hospitals that rely on this source of revenue? <laughs> what happens to the hundreds of billions we underwrite in automotive insurance every year? But there's other diseases on this list. I'm assuming there's smokers in the room here. I've actually never smoked a cigarette before. Did you know that half of cigarettes are sold in a gas station? So, I mean, they really rely on impulse purchasers for their market. And so if drivers don't go to the gas station, where will half the cigarettes be sold? And the cigarette industry is already under pressure right now, right? from e-cigarettes taking off and who knows what. And it's not going to get any easier for them. Fewer smokers, maybe less lung cancer, and that's actually less revenue for the hospital as well. But since we're in a university setting here, and I'm assuming a lot of you are students, I, I do want to think about your career prospects a little bit. And I would imagine you know, a lot of you will stay in the academic path, right? And, uh, um, you know, continue your academics outside the university as well, which is cool. The car industry supports a lot of jobs out there, a lot of jobs that don't need a college degree that are very highly paid, auto inspectors, auto mechanics, auto builders, or auto insurers, or people in the oil industry, or uh, uh, train operators, or who knows what. And what happens to these people uh, when their jobs are ch changed? Will they need a college degree? Will that make your classrooms more full? I mean, it's already pretty hard to find a job with a PhD in uh, philosophy or whatever. Um, and it's not going to get easier anytime soon. I mean, maybe you'll need a PhD to work at McDonald's. Actually, some people already did. This group of PhDs uh, <laughs> went to McDonald's, and they looked at uh, milkshakes. Who is the target market for a McDonald's milkshake? Is it a child on a summer day? Mommy, mommy, I want a milkshake. Mommy. But children are actually pretty bad customers. I mean, they're, they're not repeat customers. I mean, no sane parent's going to buy a, buy a milkshake for their child every day. So these Harvard PhDs went to McDonald's. The majority of milkshakes are sold in the morning to drivers. And why is that? I mean, well, I'm driving along in the car. I got one hand on the wheel right here, and I'm hungry. So I could get a burger, but a burger's pretty hard to eat with one hand. I'm dropping it all everywhere. And especially with this, I can't hold a burger now. And a muffin is still pretty hard to eat. You know, sticky, gets my car messy. So I got one hand here on the wheel, and one hand on my McDonald's milkshake. And I drive, that in the, and I drive to work drinking that. In the self-driving world, I have two hands now. I can munch down on that burger. <laughs> I, I can even eat a steak in the car. I can, I can cut a steak in the car with my two hands. So what happens to the milkshake industry? What happens to your grandpa who is milking cows in the Alps? I mean, that's pretty sad. And meanwhile, the truckers are pretty sad, too. They got no milk to deliver. And honestly, they don't have a truck to drive anymore. 
We have 3.5 million truckers on the American roads. That's over 1% of the voting population. That's enough to swing an election. And maybe they will go vote for somebody who's going to make trucking great again. <laughs> And maybe the new party will want to make other things great again as well. And that could have really a lot of impacts that are far beyond what an individual car can have. I mean, I, I think maybe I'm just crazy here. Maybe I'm just thinking about too many hypothetical unknowns here. But the world changes fast. This is 1905, uh, New York City. And uh, this is, um, uh, look at this traffic jam of horses. And just 10 years later, same street, I don't see where the horses are anymore. Because the ball bounces pretty quickly. I mean, I love looking at historical pictures and kind of uh, uh, see kind of what happens. I mean, I, I, I wonder how we should plan ahead for this kind of change, right? And what you don't want to be is this guy. The guy who wrote the flag law. In the UK, several US states, maybe several other areas in the world as well. A driver was required to have a guy uh, walk in front of him with a flag. The result being that your car was no faster than a horse. You don't want to be this guy. But, you know, I love looking at history and seeing how we react and how we use technology in different ways. And I like looking back at my old memories as well at the first car I had, this Honda Civic. And I think about all the experiences I've had in it and uh, all the things I did in the back seat before the days of Tinder, you know. And I, I asked my cousin, uh, my cousin Christopher, you don't have a car, where are you going to make out? Where are you going to take your Tinder dates? Because the self-driving car is going to change where we make babies. It's going to change your milkshake, and it's going to change your house, and it will change the White House. I, I don't know which way the ball is going to bounce, but I know it's going to bounce pretty quickly. And these unknown effects are the most fascinating ones. So don't go chasing after a ball that's bouncing away. Go position yourself to catch it in the most unexpected places. <laughs>